okay so so in this uh, i'll discuss some basics of uh, dynamical systems now what is a dynamical system a system in which the states vary with time states are dynamic they vary with time and obviously brain is a huge dynamical system because if you think of each neuron state as a variable xi right that state because neurons are going and switching between excited state and you know resting for the state and so on so you can think of it as a variable which is you know going up and down between some maximum value and some minimum value and that is happening with all the 100 billion neurons in the brain or 86 billion neurons in the brain so it's a huge dynamical system so how do you describe the dynamics of such a large system so let us start with some really basic ways of describing such dynamical systems right a general formulation is so if x is your state vector right x is a n dimensional vector it's an rn as an equation 1 here you can write the dynamics as dx by dt is equal to f of x where f of x is also a vector function right and if x is uh, n dimensional then f of x will also be n dimensional so f of x will map an n dimensional input vector x into an n dimensional output vector right which is which is this derivative dx by dt now um, so what we typically do is we consider the points where uh, this uh, derivative becomes zero okay and uh, so I linearize it at that point and so therefore i can get this matrix pij which is given as do fix by do xj or to keep it simple if you don't want to get into the nonlinearity here let us take a simple version of the dynamical system right which is linear right we we'll look at nonlinearity later is no hurry for that so let's consider dx by dt is equal to ax right and the same thing you can expand because x has components x1 x2 xn and so on so you can expand all these components like what you are saying in the slide below right x1 dot is equal to a11 x1 plus a12 x2 and so on so forth okay so you can expand like that now how do you solve such a system of equation because you have system of n linear differential equations how do you solve them let us start with a simple case of uh, of a one dimensional system where n equal to 1 and then the same ideas can be applied to even the n dimensional case so in a, in one dimensional case the equation dx by dt is equal to x simply becomes dx by dt equal to x where a is a scalar not a matrix now consider the solution x of t is equal to c into e power at so we know that this is a solution so if we plug in the solution to the equation above You get dx by dt is equal to a c times e power at, which is x. Okay, so you can easily show that c is equal to x at zero, the initial condition. So the amplitude of the solution depends on the initial condition of the uh, of x. Now let us go to more general case, n-dimensional case, where n is greater than or equal to one. <coughs> Now <coughs> you can see that a is a square matrix because uh, you know, a is relate, you know, relating And an n-dimensional vector x onto an n-dimensional vector dx by dt, right? So, and uh, so you have if you solve a qi is equal to lambda a qi, that you will have uh, uh, the lambda i's are the eigenvalues of a and qi's are the eigenvectors of a. Then what is the solution to the equation x dot equal to x? The solution is of the form x t is equal to c1 into e power lambda i t q1 and so on and so forth. Plus c n into e power lambda n t q n. Okay, so you take the solution is expressed in terms of the eigenvalues lambda i and uh, the eigenvectors uh, q i uh, like this. So c's are the so basically it's a linear sum of this expression e power lambda i t times q i, right? So the solution is linear sum of such terms. And c i is just like in the previous case. The c i is depend on the initial condition. Okay, so how do we know that uh, this solution satisfies the equation? So let us uh, uh, see that. So if you plug this in here, uh, you get uh, lambda i's come out. Okay, and uh, you know that uh, lambda i q i is equal to a q i. Okay, so you can you get a q i out, and uh, so so c i sigma c i e power lambda i t times a. Uh, Right, as, as you know, uh, times q i. The you, a will come out. A will come post multiply. Can be pre multiplied. 
right? So this whole thing is equal to xt. So you get uh, this whole thing x dot is equal to xt. So you can show very easily that this expression satisfies the original equation. Now consider the points. Uh, consider what are called fixed points. They also called stationary points. They also called critical points. They go by many different names. So when you have the equation x dot equal to x, so obviously x equal to zero is a fixed point because when x equal to zero, x dot is also equal to zero. So now, well, let us study, right? If that fixed point is stable, so x dot equal to zero. So there, if you start from there, you won't move because the derivative is zero there. But what happens if you are perturbed away from that point? Will you come back to that point or will you roll away from that point? We will see that. So that decides the stability of that point. Next, what is the pattern of the vector field around that point? Right, based on that pattern, we can classify the fixed points into several categories. Right, uh, let us see that. So to understand this, it's, easy, it's uh, very easy to explain this in terms of uh, in a two dimensional space because the number of combinations are few. Um, so let us do that for, and also you can draw pictures. So let us look at that two dimensional space for n equal to two. For n equal to two, x of t becomes c1 into e power lambda 1t q1 plus c2 into e power lambda 2t q2. And let us take a simple case, uh, just without loss of generality. Same thing can be is a, can be easily extended to more general case. Let us assume A is symmetric. So therefore, Q1 and Q2 will be orthogonal because we know that you know you have orthogonal matrix that exists uh, for symmetric matrices. And let us also assume that uh, Q1 is uh, along x1 axis and Q2 is along x2 axis. Basically, x1 is like x axis and x2 is like y axis. Uh, and how do you assume that we can always rotate the field and when you rotate the field that doesn't change the nature of the fixed point If it is stable, it will still be stable. If it's unstable, it will still be unstable. So we, we are okay with rotating the field So now if you make this simplifying assumptions uh, Let us see what uh, the field looks like. So now the solution is like this So q1 is a vector and q2 is a vector both are orthogonal and also I'm assuming that Q1 is along the x1 axis, Q2 is along the x2 axis. So think of this as you know the notation i hat and j hat. Okay, they indicate the x and y coordinate or components. So therefore, x1 component is basically this term, c1 into e power lambda 1t. X2 component is basically c2 into e power lambda 2t. This is valid only after making all these assumptions. So now let us look at what the field looks like. Uh, as you have for different combinations of eigenvalues. If you remember, uh, oh no, it, it was in the eigen, in the linear algebra PPT, I described all these combinations, but you can take a look at that sometime. So basically when, so you see that X1 is given by this formula, X2 is given by this formula. Now consider what happens when both eigenvalues are uh, real and negative. When they're real and negative, Right, uh, e power lambda 1t and e power lambda 2t keeps on falling with with time to zero. So therefore, x1 and x2 go to zero. So you see that all the arrows are pointed towards zero. Okay, so you can see that this kind of a point is a stable point. It's called a stable node. Right, there's a different kind of stability which has a different name. So I'll come to that later. So this is a stable node because uh, so the origin is is stationary or it's a fixed point. Because if you start from the origin, you won't move. But even if you are perturbed and pushed away from the origin, since all the arrows point towards the origin, you come back to the origin. These arrows is the vector field. These arrows are basically drawn. Uh, they, they represent the vector field that is dx1 by dt and dx2 by dt. That's what the arrow, each arrow is showing. So at this point, what is the value of dx1 by dt? Uh, or x1 dot and x2 dot. Okay, so far from the center, uh, from the origin, you will have vectors are longer, uh, right? And as you go close to the center, they are shorter. Okay, so now let us take the other case where both angles are real, but positive. So when that happens, you can see that uh, this expression, C1 and e power lambda 1t, e power lambda 2t, both keep blowing up with time. That means x1 and x2 keep blowing up. Therefore, uh, no matter where you start, Right, you go away from the origin. So even if you start from the origin, as long as you are on the origin, you won't move. But even if you are pushed off the origin slightly, from then on you get repelled by the origin, you move away and go off to infinity. So this is obviously an unstable point. It's called an unstable node. 
then you have another a third case which is quite interesting that is uh, your lambda 1 is positive and lambda 2 is negative or vice versa one of them is positive one of them is negative so then in this case uh, so let us say here actually lambda 1 is positive lambda 2 is negative this lambda 1 is positive x1 keeps blowing up lambda 2 is negative x2 keeps going to zero so if i start from here i move like this right to increasing x1 values but i move like this going towards zero in the x2 direction so the flow in this quadrant will be like this flow in this quadrant will be like this flow in this quadrant will be like this just like this so if i start from the origin and get perturbed off if i get get perturbed in the vertical direction i'll be pushed back to the origin if i get perturbed on the horizontal direction depending upon which way i get perturbed i continue to proceed in the same direction and move away to the infinity this kind of a node is called a saddle node <coughs> this is node that is just in two dimensions in n dimensions you can imagine the kind of you know more complicated variation that you can encounter because if you have 100 eigen values and uh, half of them are positive half of them are negative you can imagine the complex of the state space where in some directions you go towards origin some direction you go for away from the origin and so on then let us come to a next interesting case called a stable focus so as you know the eigen values don't have to be real they can even be complex because only when a is symmetric can you uh, you are ensured that all eigen values are real otherwise in general eigen values can be complex so in a two dimensional case if eigen values are complex and if the a itself is real right then the both eigen values will be complex conjugates they will be of this form then both uh, x1 and x2 will be of this form uh, real part of c1 times e power, e power sigma plus i omega uh, times t so if you expand that a little bit uh, it will you can put it in this form a1 into e power sigma t times cos of omega t plus phi1 so this a1 which is amplitude and the phi1 which is the phase are dependent on the initial condition then x2 also has a similar form uh, sorry this real part should be here this here also x2 is real part of c2 times e power lambda 2t <clears throat> since both lambdas have the same real part imagine the parts have different signs opposite signs right so be, therefore the x2 uh, form of the x2 also is, looks like this a2 times e power sigma t times cos t plus omega t plus phi2 so x1 and x2 only differ in terms of uh, in this amplitude and phase otherwise the frequency and the the dk term e power sigma t term will be the same for both cases so it is looking it is basically uh, both of them both x1 and x2 are uh, decaying sinusoids right and if you plot the one against the other in in two dimensional space it they will show a spiral and this spiral if sigma is negative the spiral will be going inwards because amplitude will be falling and going to zero right so the spiraling will happen inwards or if the sigma is uh, positive so that is a positive real part right then the spiraling happens outward it will spiral outwards so this is a stable no, stable point stable fixed point but uh, you call it a focus just to indicate that uh, your imaginary part is non zero similarly this is an unstable focus uh, because the image part is non zero and it's unstable then you have a more another interesting case where it's purely imaginary right there's no real part at all so because of that what happens in this expression is this e power sigma t term goes to 1 or right? sigma is because sigma is zero so both of them will be a1 into cos omega t plus phi1 a2 into cos omega t plus phi2 so you have pure two pure sinusoids right uh, which is x1 and x2 so if you plot them you'll get an ellipse right the amplitudes are the same you get a circle so this is called a center so the thing is in this case the orbit right that neither goes towards center nor fly away to infinity wherever you start it it will keep on going in a closed loop at that point so the amplitude of the loop depends upon the initial condition and this kind of a fixed point is called a center now you, you have even more bizarre cases uh, so this is okay star is uh, quite straightforward so in this case both the lambdas eigen values are real and equal right when the real and equal so what happens in this expression is uh, so both uh, lambdas are the same so lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 
right? And so you can combine that. Uh, so you can have, say, uh, C1, so C1, uh, C1 plus C2 into uh, e power lambda t, right, times Q1 plus Q2. So that's what you'll get. Um, sorry, C power lambda t into uh, C1 Q1 plus C2 Q2. So therefore, uh, it all depends only on the initial condition and the rate the, of progress, the progression, there's only one rate constant, which is lambda. And because of that, uh, no matter where you start, everything just, so there's no difference in the rate at which x1 varies to x2 varies. So the ratio of x1 to x2 or dx1 and dh2 will be constant every, right? Uh, so therefore, uh, the flow is all pointed inwards, uh, towards the origin. So then you have another bizarre case, which is one of the lambdas is zero. So let's say lambda one is zero. So then x1 is this. So therefore, if you plug lambda one equals zero, it becomes c1. Now note that c1 depends on the initial condition, All right? So x1 remains a constant, which is a depend on initial condition. Now x2 varies like this. Okay, here again, you have two cases. Lambda two can be positive or negative. So now see that, so if you start from some point like this, Right, and uh, since x1 doesn't vary, it will keep on proceeding in the vertical direction. That progression, if uh, lambda 2 is positive, it will go off to infinity, right, in the vertical direction. If lambda 2 is negative, it will come back to zero, come back to the x-axis or x1 axis. Okay, so basically in this case, if lambda 2 is negative, all flow is attracted towards the x1 axis, right? And if lambda 2 is uh, positive, then all flow is repelled away from the x1 axis, but all flow is vertical, right? It does, there's no horizontal motion. Uh, this kind of a feature is not a fixed point anymore. It's a line of fixed points. The entire x1 axis acts like a continuum of fixed points. It's also called sometimes a line of attractor, right? And so the entire x-axis acts like a line of uh, fixed points. And from that uh, point, that line, the flow either is gets repelled away to infinite away uh, towards infinity or gets attracted towards itself now uh, let us uh, talk about uh, classification of fixed points so if i take a linear system again like this let's take a two dimensional system for simplicity so the matrix a is uh, a b c d right you can find out the eigen values of this by solving for determinant of this equation uh, you know uh, determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. If you set that, you get this, all right? And then you get this uh, characteristic equation, which is a quadratic equation. Now, tau is defined as the trace of the matrix, which is a plus t, and delta is, de is a determinant, which is a d minus b c. So solving for uh, this, uh, you know, for lambdas, we get lambda one, lambda two is equal to tau plus or minus tau square minus four delta by two. So we know that uh, the kind of uh, fixed points you get depends on lambda one, lambda two. So now the question is, if you vary tau and uh, delta, which is the trace and determinant uh, of this system, this matrix, right? Then how does the dynamics vary? Okay, so take the first case, uh, delta is negative or determinant is negative. So then the eigenvalues are real, okay, and have opposite signs. So this negative eigenvalues are real and uh, opposite signs. So therefore the fixed point is uh, a saddle node. And if you take uh, delta is positive, so, so this is positive. Then again, you have two subcases. So if tau square minus four delta is positive, then both roads are real. So then this is less than equal to T. Uh, so if uh, T is, uh, so the, if uh, delta if it's positive, both roads are positive. If both angles are positive, you have unstable nodes. If both uh, roots are negative, you have uh, so you have stable nodes. So actually, this should be tau, not t. Right? It is not tau. Then, if delta tau square minus four delta is negative, then the roots are uh, complex conjugates, right? And if uh, tau is positive, the real part of roots is positive, right? And uh, so you have unstable focus. And if tau is negative, the real part of the roots is negative. Therefore, you have a stable focus. If tau is zero, the roots are purely imaginary, and therefore you have a center, and tau is uh, uh, zero, then the roots are equal, right? And uh, you have line of fixed points. So th this whole thing can be summarized in one map, right? 
which is like a bifurcation map of this system. So in this map, uh, the x-axis is delta determinant and y-axis is tau, uh, uh, right? So if you take different values of uh, delta and tau, in this region, right, you have unstable spirals or unstable focus. Spiral and focus mean the same thing. In this region, you have stable spirals, right? And this region, you have unstable nodes. In this region, you have stable nodes. So you see that in this uh, plot, in the first part, in the below the x-axis or the delta axis, you have stable points, either spirals or foci or uh, nodes. Above the delta axis or x-axis, you have unstable points. All this only in the right half plane. If you go to the left half plane, you only have saddle points because in the left half plane, the two eigenvalues are opposite signs, right, and they are uh, real. Okay, and therefore you just have saddles. In the right half plane, again, in the upper part, you have unsta unstable instability. In the lower part, you have stability. And there again, within this curve, this curve is where the determinant goes to zero. That is tau square minus four delta is zero. So in this graph, tau square minus four delta is zero happens to be a parabola, right? So inside this, in the inner side of this parabola, right, again, in the you have spirals. And outside the parabola, you have nodes. So again, in the upper part of the right half plane, you have instability and lower part, you have stability. Okay, so uh, so let us stop there. That, that gives an idea of uh, how you can describe, uh, solve the simple linear dynamical system, x dot equal to x, right? And what are different kinds of fixed points you can have. And particularly for a two dimensional case, we have worked out how by varying some parameters of the system, in this case, the two parameters are delta and tau, how by varying these uh, two parameters, we can go from one kind of a st stable point to another kind of stable, one kind of a fixed point to another kind of fixed point. So, so basically in this map, you see that you have uh, certain regions where inside the region, there is no change in dynamics. So inside this region, no matter where you are, you have the same quality of dynamics. But when you cross the border, the quality of dynamics suddenly changes. Okay, such uh, sudden changes in dynamics is called bifurcations. So you see, there are, so there are many such borders where bifurcations occur, right? And so when you go from here to here, you go from an unstable spiral to an unstable node. When you cross this x-axis, you go from unstable spiral to a stable spiral. In fact, on the border you have centers because on the border you have two lambda will be the same. So similarly, if you go from here to here, across the y-axis, uh, you go from unstable node to a saddle point. This is again a bifurcation. So this kind of a map is called a bifurcation map. So this is a bifurcation map of a, a linear two-dimensional dyna uh, dynamical system, x dot equal to x, where x is in x is two-dimensional. Okay, so the bifurcations are important because uh, if you look at a single neuron, right, it uh, lives in two basic states. The resting state of a neuron is like a stable node or a stable focus. We will let us see what it is later on. And the, the exerted state, right, consists of actually it's not just one uh, action potential. Typically, you, it produces many action potentials. It's a more complicated state. But point is, it shows a qualitative change in dynamics when it gets excited. So that's a bifurcation. But it's a more complicated kind of bifurcation that cannot be captured in this map. So we look at that later. So uh, let us send this class now. And uh, next class, we look at uh, some basics of phase plane analysis. Because phase plane analysis, you start looking at uh, nonlinear dynamical systems. So we'll spend a lot of time on that uh, because some of our copular neuron, single neuron models, right, are two dimensional nonlinear dynamical systems. So to understand the dynamics and to understand how action potential is generated, we need to study how to do, how to analyze such systems, uh, which is done using phase plan, phase plan analysis. So let us look at it in the next class on Monday.